of A Taste of Therapy TV. My name is Allison Carver. I'm so excited that you're here with me. I am your food therapist, which means I not only give you yummy recipes for some delicious dishes, but I also give you recipes to fix your relationship problems. And tonight's recipe is no different. Tonight's recipe is going to be for red beans, rice, and chorizo. And to give you the recipe to change all that passive aggressive communication into the healthier version of assertive communication. Because let's be honest, passive aggressive communication is the absolute worst. It's totally annoying and very irritating. And we all know someone who's passive aggressive. So this is a great recipe for you to do with your partner so you can fix all of that. Um, all right, let's get cooking, exactly. So this recipe is, again, really simple because all of my recipes are. You're gonna go into the kitchen with your partner, you're gonna gather all of these things, and you're going to have a great com conversation about this thing, which would be the passive aggressive communicating. Now, um, one thing I want to point out real quick before I get started is that this works best when both of you um, are passive aggressive, or at least one of you in the relationship is passive aggressive. That's really truly how this is going to work best because it's going to give you the opportunity to learn the steps to change that communication into something better. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, well, Allison, great. Neither one of us are passive aggressive, so we don't need to make this dish. I'm here to tell you that I completely disagree. I bet even if you don't think you are passive aggressive, we all do this from time to time. So just go ahead and do this and act as if you are that passive aggressive person because I know that you are. Okay, long intro, but here we go. So here's what we got for this recipe. It's already cooked in one pot and it takes about 20 minutes to make, which is fantastic. So this recipe calls for celery and an onion that I <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay, so it calls for celery and a chopped onion. It calls for one can of red kidney beans. So good. It calls for green pepper, some chorizo, and cumin, tomatoes, salt, pepper, all sorts of stuff. Now what you're going to do again is you're going to dump all of this into one pot. So I'm actually going to assemble this now, and then we're going to dive into the cooking therapy part because I want to go ahead and get this on the stove. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put all of these things that you just saw into this pot. So one can of red beans. And let me hear from all of you. Let me get some uh, some hands up. How many, how many of you know some passive aggressive individuals in your lives? I know you all do, so let's, let's hear. I want to hear from you. All right, I'm adding in my celery and my onions. Celery, again, while I'm getting all this feedback, celery is one of those things where it's so good in all these recipes. It always adds that little something extra. I think a lot of people assume celery is like for ranch dressing and that's just the end of it. But when you add it cooked into your dishes, it adds such a depth of flavor. So make sure you always add celery. And we always usually have celery out anyway, so you might as well use it, right? Okay, so added those, I'm gonna add a can of diced tomatoes and green chilies with the juice right in here. All right, I'm going to add my half a cup of uncooked rice. This is going to cook the rice right in here. I love it. Red beans and rice is so amazing and so easy to make, right? All right, I'm going to add my cup of chicken broth right into this. And again, this is something that you and your partner can make any old night of the week. It's simple, it's easy. And you're going to have a great conversation while you make it. All right, so I dumped all of those things into the pot. And just like with rice, you know how you make rice? You're going to get it to a boil, and then you're going to reduce it to a simmer. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to get that up to a boil. And then I'm going to add my cumin. It calls for an eighth of a teaspoon. But I love cumin, so I'm just going to dump a lot in. In my opinion, you can never have too much cumin. Never. All right, dump that in. Same with salt and pepper. All right. So have you guys all been thinking about who is this passive aggressive person in your life? Do I have some, some, some thoughts about that? Okay. I know you do. Right? Let's be honest. Passive aggressive communication is the worst. It's so annoying. But when you think about it in the way that we're going to talk about tonight, it's interesting. You can actually kind of, kind of understand why the person communicates in that way. All right, so give this a good stir. Make sure I added everything. 
celery, rice, cumin, salt, pepper, green pepper, chicken broth, tomatoes, and kidney beans. All right, it's all in there. I'm giving this a nice good stir, and I'm gonna bring this to a boil. I'm gonna cover it while I do that. All right, so let's talk. Oh, oh my goodness, I forgot the garlic. See? All right, let me add my garlic. It calls for two cloves of chopped garlic. I cannot forget that. That would have been criminal. Okay. Okay, all that's in the pot, and we're going to let this come to a boil. All right. So let's talk about passive-aggressive communication, shall we? Okay. So when you're making this dish with your partner, there's four steps. We just did step one, okay? And there's going to be four more, or three more steps, rather. But let's think about real quick, what is passive-aggressive communication? So basically, the therapeutic term is that it's a deliberate way for someone to express anger, but in a very masked and like subtle way. Because ultimately, somebody who is passive-aggressive is ultimately angry. And for whatever reason, along their life, you know, they learned that it was easier for them to display their anger in this way rather than being outwardly angry. Because you don't ever want to be straight up aggressive, right? That's certainly not the best way to go about getting things accomplished. So this individual, whether it's you or me, learned that by doing it this way, it was safer for them to be angry and get their points across by being passive aggressive. Does that make sense? Do you understand you guys? Okay. So that's kind of reasoning behind it. And if you think about it from that perspective, that perhaps this individual, you know, maybe they grew up in a home where it wasn't safe for them to, you know, be angry. Maybe they were harmed or something if they felt that they, you know, needed to express their anger or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. If they didn't feel like it was a good opportunity for them to be angry, then they're not going to be angry. So they're going to develop another way to do it. It's kind of a good way to kind of like wrap your head around it. Um, so this is a great way to express your anger indirectly. So what are some examples of passive aggressive behavior? We all know these. Sulking, ignoring. Another one of my favorites would be doing tasks that you're asked to do, but doing them on a sub level, like not as good as you normally do it. So if you are asked to do something, you're going to do it a little bit less than the standard way you normally do it. Totally passive aggressive, right? Or spreading rumors, uh, discontent, all kinds of really irritating behaviors. This is ways for somebody to get a good little jab in there um, and do it in a way where they're going to say something to you and, oh, you know, I didn't know that that's how you felt. They're going to jab you and hurt you in a way that's blatant enough that you know that, that it hurts, but they're also going to do it subtly enough that they can deny that they hurt you if you confront them on it. That's really truly the bottom line about what passive aggressive behavior is. And it's so unhealthy in your relationships. If one of you is communicating with your partner like that, that is not the way to do any kind of communicating ever about anything. Because all it's going to do is piss off the other person, right? It's not good. So this is, again, something that's killing your relationship. So take that passive aggressive person into the kitchen and make this recipe. And I want you to go through these steps because what you're gonna learn is that not only are you gonna identify what the passive aggressive behaviors are, you're gonna then flip it and learn to become more assertive. In my world, the exact opposite of passive aggressive behavior is something that I call assertive behavior. Now I don't mean assertive in the way you're thinking like, assertive in the workplace, you know, those obnoxious people that are super like gung-ho, I don't mean that. I mean more that you know what your needs are and you're able to openly and effectively ask for what your needs are. You're not being wishy-washy, you're not being roundabout, you're not whatever, you're being very direct and you're being very open and honest and direct in what your needs are and who can meet your needs. Um, it's something that is very much a skill that needs to be practiced, but it's certainly something you can learn to do. Okay, so that's kind of my little spiel about passive aggressive. Do we have any questions um, from anybody about what that is? Any thoughts? Anyone want to share? Maybe a great passive aggressive story. Um, I think it's funny whenever I meet, you know, couples in my practice and I work, work with them, hearing them, oh, it's bubbling. You hear that? We got some bubbling going on. Okay, so I'm going to reduce this down to a simmer. I'm going to stir and I'm going to go back to my thought. Oh, it smells so good. And I love how the rice is going to cook right in this pot. Can you all see this? Look how gorgeous that is. All those colors. So good. Okay. So 
So I'm gonna let cover this back up. Set up for the timer. Okay, so this was step one of my dish, right? Let me set the timer so I don't forget. We're gonna set this for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna chat with y'all for about 10 minutes. Okay. So step one, you've done this. You and your partner have put everything into the pot. You are going to recognize what is the behavior that sets off your passive aggressive behavior, right? Step one, cooking therapy, step one, there it is, folks. Recognize what is the behavior. What is it that the other person does, right? What is it that your partner does to you that makes you do that? What is it that makes you trigger this? immediate thought of, oh, I need to be passive aggressive. I, you know, am reacting negatively to this, so I need to react in this way. So there's always something, right? Passive aggression doesn't just happen, it's a reaction to something. So own it, here people, own it. I want you to admit it, own it, share it, put it in the kitchen, right here and now. During step one, we put all this junk in the pot. Tell your partner, you know what? I feel passive aggressive because you lie to me, or I feel passive aggressive when I feel attacked, or I get passive aggressive when whatever. Enter in your own behavior that makes you feel immediately like you need to be passive aggressive. Okay? Step one, right there. Step two is you are going to let this come to a simmer, which is what I'm doing right now. And again, you're letting it simmer because you want the rice to cook. It's gonna cook in this pot. Okay, so we got some good, you know, eight to 10 minutes to let it simmer. So here's where you and your partner are going to, okay, we recognize that there's a behavior that makes you feel passive aggressive. Now the two of you are gonna work out, is there a pattern? Find out if there's a pattern. Is there an immediate trigger? You know, what is the trigger? So, okay, you've already admitted you feel you need to be passive aggressive when um, you feel attacked. Okay, so is there a pattern to when you feel attacked, why you feel attacked? Let's talk about in our relationship, what is that pattern? That's This is a really crucial step because it really impacts both of you. And it's important for both of you to be an active participant in solving this problem, which is what you're doing. So this is, again, an opportunity, right? Cooking therapy creates opportunities for you to be honest about what you're feeling and to be, both of you, to admit, I'm going to this down a little bit high, but for both of you to admit that you both are passive aggressive, right? Own it, people. That's, that's my saying for tonight. Own the passive aggressive. Because it's true. We all are passive aggressive. If we don't mean to, we all do it. So we're going to recognize the behavior. We're going to look for that pattern in the relationship. And again, one more thing I want to say about relationships. Relationships are nothing if just a whole bunch of patterns. We all have patterns in our relationships, whether we like to admit them or not. They're there. Usually they're negative patterns, but they are there. And a lot of times we get stuck in this vicious cycle. Right? I mean, we can admit that. Um, it, it's this constant, like, one person says one thing and the other person reacts and then they say something and the other person reacts. And it's just this vicious, I keep doing this, <laughs> vicious cycle. So passive aggressive communication is no different. It's a cycle. So find your pattern and break the pattern here, people. Okay, I think I've beaten that one to a pulp there. Okay, so step three of this recipe is you're going to add my chorizo into the pot. I, what I've done for you all tonight, since this is only a 30-minute show, I've actually gone ahead and I've pre-cooked my chorizo. Can you see? Look at this. Oh, gorgeous. This is so pretty. Chorizo is amazing. For those of you who like it, don't like it, have never had it before, I need you to go out and buy some right now because it's this delicious, savory, it's spicy, it's got a hint of um, just so much flavor to it. It's so got so much depth. It's not just straight up sausage. It's just got so much flavor to it. Um, it's not spicy, but it's got a lot of spice to it. If that makes sense? Um, I bought this at our local butcher, so it was actually not cooked. Um, you can buy chorizo at the grocery store. You can buy it kind of near the kielbasa section of your grocery store, um, you know, where it's actually pre-cooked. You know those sausage links I'm talking about? You can buy that if it's pre-cooked, then you don't need to cook it. Obviously, you can just dump it right in the pot. But since this was not cooked, I needed to cook it. So I've actually sauteed it in a pan with this a little bit of water. That's it. I didn't add any butter or anything to it. Just a little bit of water to give it something to cook in. Cooked it for about 10 minutes. Um, yeah, 
So anyway, that's the chorizo. So step three, we're going to add the chorizo right into this pot. I've got a nice simmer going on here. So while you do this step, now is the fun part. Now you and your partner are going to, again, own it and say what it is out loud in the kitchen. What is your passive aggressive statement that you like to say? We all have them. Whether it's something like, fine, or whatever you say. Um, another good one is, oh, I thought you knew what I was talking about. Right, passive aggressive? Um, you could say, I didn't know that's what you meant, or whatever, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Whatever statement you like to say when you're feeling passive aggressive, I need you to admit it and tell your partner what it is. Now the funny, whoops, I just dripped on it though. <sighs> Sorry about that. So the funny thing here is that this is not going to be anything that your partner doesn't already know. I guarantee he or she knows what your passive aggressive statement is. But the thing about this is we need to know that you know what it is, right? So you need to own it and share it and say it and put it in the room, as I like to say. So share what your passive aggressive statement is because we all have them. And you're going to do that while you do step three of this recipe. And step four of this recipe is you're going to let this cook until all of the liquid has been drawn out of the recipe. So just like when you're cooking rice, you know, you want to bring it to a boil and you're going to let it simmer and you're going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on the type of rice, until all the liquid has been absorbed and then the rice is cooked. Same thing with this. You're going to let it cook down until all the water is gone. Um, and while you do this step of the recipe, you are both of you are going to then rephrase that statement that you just said. So whatever it is your obnoxious, passive aggressive statement is, you're going to rephrase it and you're going to practice it and you're going to say it again in an, in an assertive way. So you're not going to be passive aggressive. If your passive aggressive statement was, I didn't know that's what you meant, you know, whatever. Say that in an assertive way. <laughs> Change that, that way that you said it into a way of saying, I was unaware that, or I don't know, let me think. So to be assertive in that, you could say something like, I was unaware that you weren't, you didn't know what I meant. Let me say this again so you, it makes more sense. Or so that it's more clear, let me say it again. Something that's direct, to the point, not rude, not judgmental, not putting all these personal jabs, but just being really honest and asking for what you need. Right? That's really what this is about. That's what it means to be assertive. And that's why this recipe is so amazing. Not only is it delicious, I wish you guys could smell how good it smells in my kitchen right now, but it also gives you four easy steps to turn any passive aggressive statement immediately into an assertive one. And it just takes practice. That's all it is. It gives a little bit of practice. Um, it helps you to do this skill over and over again. So don't beat yourself up if it's harder than you might think, because a lot of times this passive aggressive communication is something that's been ingrained in you. You've been doing it for a long time. Give yourself a little bit of a break. Practice. Okay, maybe what I said wasn't all that great. Let me take a step back. Let me rephrase it and let me try it again. That's what cooking therapy is all about. Giving you a solution to a really simple basic problem that all couples face and giving you a really concrete example for how to fix that problem. Does that make sense? I hope so. So what do you all think? Let me hear some feedback. Do you think that this is a recipe you think you're going to try? Do you think your partner who is passive aggressive would be up for this? Let me hear what you have to say. I really want to hear it. As it gives us a good stir. Oh, it smells so good. I love how colorful this dish is too. It's got so much, oh, so much flavor. And so many like bright, vivid colors to it. I love it. So let me think. Let me see what I got. So I'm, I'm trying to think of, a, of an example that I know of as far as passive aggressive couples that I've worked with or even in my own life. You know, this is something, like I just said a minute ago, we all struggle with this and it becomes this vicious pattern in relationships. And so getting this great recipe and this example of how to, in the moment, change what you say is like a light bulb going on off because think about it. Think, think about this. So if you're in a relationship with someone who's really passive aggressive and you know for a fact this is something that you both struggle with. And like, you know, you say to yourself, God, if there's one thing I could change about my relationship, it would be the fact that he is so passive aggressive. 
right? I'm talking to you. If that's your reality, this is 100% for you because you're going to take him into the kitchen and you're going to practice his reactions to you that are passive aggressive and you're going to practice and flip it around. And think about all the fights that that will prevent in the future of your relationship. I mean, think about that for a minute. That's pretty profound, right? He's going to go from having this huge, constant, vicious cycle of a fight to then maybe not. Maybe then in the future being like, you know what? He's going to remember that. He's going to say, you know, the last time I said it like that, it really pissed her off. So maybe I'll say it like this, right? Does that make sense? It's really what this is all about. This is still a little bit of not a liquid in here, so I'm actually going to let this keep simmering. And when you're done with this dish, once it's all cooked and all the liquid's gone, you're going to let it sit and cool for about five minutes just so that you know, you'll burn off your mouth. Um, you can add to it some topped, uh, chopped, <laughs> can't talk tonight. chopped parsley or chopped cilantro, which you know I will add to mine because I'm obsessed with cilantro. Um, any kind of fresh fresh herb, you can add to the top of that just to give it some bite of freshness. Serve it in a bowl, and there you go. Dinner, ready, done. And it took, what, 15 minutes to make this dish? Simple. Simple, simple. Um, I know. I wish we had smell of vision too. I wish you guys could smell this. Here, let me pull it up so you can see it, because I want to get some, I want some high fives from my audience tonight. I want to hear that you guys are excited about this. Can you see this? Can you see how delicious this is? So, so good. Oh, she's got so many bright colors. The red, the yellow, the white, oh, the brown. It's amazing. The green. Right, I'm going to let this still simmer a little bit. I just want to share with you one quick story um, before I sign off of um, a couple that I actually just recently worked with on this exact recipe. And that's why I wanted to share it with you because we just did this the other night. And again, you know, they were both like, yeah, this isn't going to work. I love that about the couples I work with. I feel like they all have this immediate thought of, yeah, mm, cooking therapy sounds great. It's not going to work for me. But then after we're done, they're all like, that was freaking amazing. We had a wonderful time. We actually talked about stuff. You know, everybody, everybody has a reaction. So it was funny to me when they were like, oh my God, Allison, this completely worked for us. <laughs> it was just really funny. So anyway, um, they were having this issue with dividing up the chores in their house. So, for instance, the husband was struggling with you know working long hours and all that stuff, and the wife was asking um, just for some extra help around the house. Like, what can you help me do? And he was the one who was really passive aggressive about it, and he would say things like, "Oh well, you know." I wish you would stop, or how would he phrase it? It was, I, it was really funny. He would say something like, I really could, I could help you more, but I've just got you know, X, Y, and Z to do. And you know, you really don't need my help because if you wouldn't get your nails done all the time, or if you weren't so busy like looking at Facebook, you could easily get all the things done you're asking me to do. He said that to her, and I'm in the kitchen like, did, did you guys just hear that? Because I heard that, and, and I had to pause, and I'd be like, okay, can you rephrase that? Because that was really crappy for you to say that to her. And um, anyway, it just, it, it was a great opportunity for him to take a step back and be like, wow, what I just said was really hurtful, and I didn't even, he didn't even realize. He was just so pissed off. He didn't even, he couldn't even see it from that lens until I made him take a step back rephrase it and say it again and eventually after two or three times he was able to say it in a way that was better and made sense and didn't make her mad and again it totally worked so it was again what I do here every week there's a purpose it does work I promise if you take these recipes home you try them in your kitchen I know that they'll work for you because it gives you a concrete solution to fix all those relationship problems in your house I promise all right I've got a few more moments of this simmer Oh, so, so delish. I cannot wait to have this. My favorite thing about doing the show, too, is I get to have dinner after this and eat all this yummy food. All right. There's no more questions. I don't know if I have any questions about tonight um, as far as passive aggressive. So remember, four steps to change from being passive aggressive to being assertive uh, would be recognizing the behavior, talking about your pattern, then recognizing what it is that you say that's passive aggressive and then reframing it and saying it in an assertive way. That's it. Those are your four steps. Simple, right? 
Remember, you can find all of my recipes on my website, which is atasteoftherapy.com. Go to my blog. Tonight's recipe will be called Red Beans and Rice with Chorizo. Just give that a search. You'll find this recipe along with all of my other recipes that I do every week. Thank you again to Manja TV for allowing me to be part of Therapy Thursday every week. I love doing it. I love spending my Thursday with all of you. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. And I look forward to seeing you next week and cooking up another great solution to all of your relationship problems. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.